It's the compassion of the goddess in a little lark. And the birds of Rhiannon will shield you from all sorrow until the dawn. What's up witches? Today I'm going to talk about how you can begin to work with Artemis or how she might start calling to you. And it's just like with any other deity, you know, you need to align your energy with theirs. Um, really the first sort of call that you're going to get from Artemis is like that Wendy Rule song. And it fits it very well. Follow me with, into your life under the trees. And that's sort of what she tells me all the time, you know. Let's go out and explore together. Let's, you know, kind of be together out in the wilderness and things like that. But the main thing that you're going to get from that is to mold yourself into a form that's much more like her. And that's for the better. Uh, so, really the first thing she done with me, when after I called out to her and stuff, and even before then, I, I believe... She took, it was like she took me by the shoulders and walked me in front of a mirror and said, Do you see you? Because I don't. I see a mask that you've created that you have made to appease others, to um, walk the path that society wants you to path, to the path that they want you on, and you're not really being yourself. You think you've got it figured out and you think you're going against the grain, but you're really not. You're walking the same path that everybody else is. And I don't, that's not really you. The real you that I see is the one that I've got in my arms. And that is a very powerful statement because she always sees through to the truth, period. You know, she's not going to lead you wrong in that aspect. And she'll say, this is the you that you need to be, that true version of yourself. So you're going to start working on being, becoming the best version of yourself most true form of yourself and along it's not you know going to be like an instant thing like you know you're not just going to become the best version of you after she shows you that you have to work for it and you have to work to get better and you'll always be working towards that ideal version of yourself and that's not necessarily a bad thing because people change and while that's happening, you might start to feel her say, you know, you're becoming stronger. You're, you know, you have your head in the right place. Can you see people or something that needs to be protected? So she's going to ask you to become a protector. Um, you're going to start protecting the environment, the earth, um, and people who can't stand up for themselves. So you're not... It's like the downtrodden, the disenfranchised and things, and anybody who just isn't on a level playing field, you have to help them even the odds. And it's a very good fight to fight, of course. Um, but you, you're going to start to speak out and help and say, because this person is not on a level playing field and the odds are already stacked against them, I'm going to help. And along with that, as all this stuff is happening, you might feel this call to enlightenment, which is kind of like what she's going with me or going through me right now, is this need to be more, become more enlightened, you know, not necessarily to become a know-it-all, but to enlighten the earth with truth or to, because we live in such a dim world, you know, that we need truth. And we need transparency. So it's almost as if she takes a torch, lights it, and hands it to you and says, go out in the world and show them. Be the example. You know, set the example what is morally and ethically sound. You know, no matter what rules or laws are in place, you have to show them. And, you know, you're out here holding it up saying, right, here's the truth, and people will come to you. You know, it's not like some, you know thing where she's trying to go out and find followers or anything like that. It's trying to help people become better. And it's not like from a standpoint, you know, like a charismatic standpoint, like, oh, I'm so great, I've got to do this, but, or, you know, because it makes me feel good. You're doing it because it helps others. And that's the underlying theme with Artemis is that you're helping. You're protecting and you're helping people that need it. 
And as that's really how she's been working through me, I'm not opposed to the idea that it will be any different for anybody else or that it will be the exact same as it was for me because she comes to people differently. And really, like I said in the beginning, when you start doing or spell work with Artemis, you have to align your energy with hers. So, for instance, you're not going to go out and enact certain really nasty curses on somebody that may have slighted you that really wasn't in the wrong because she'll be like, you need to cool off and come back and see if you ne really need to do that. But you would just start working with her through, let's say, protection spells. You know, protecting people. If you have, you know, children that are at school and you're worried, as all parents do, you're worried about your kids, you might invoke Artemis and say, can you help protect my children? Can you help give them strength? Can you, you know, can you help them and help me not to worry so much? And I think that would be a very pertinent request, you know, you should be like, yeah, I'll help. Um, let's see. And along with that, you know, you can ask her to protect or ask for her assistance in protecting, perhaps is the better phrase, those who are fighting the good fight. So if you've seen people out, you know, protesting and all this stuff and they're really fighting the good fight, I mean, and not in, not in your biased opinion, they're actually on the side of good. You can say, can you watch over them? Will you watch over them? And I, it's not an outlandish request. So protection is really the big one. Um, the other one is a little bit, I don't like to use this term darker, but it's a little bit more exacting, like a perhaps a little bit of a bind, banish, curse thing, because it is in her nature to be very exacting. Um, so you, you would kind of return it to sender, you know, return uh, negativity back to somebody and kind of make them, you know, take it. And I, as far as other spells go, I don't think it really needs to be a matter of like, oh, I'm in love and I need your help because she'll be like, that's on you. I can put you for, through to Aphrodite, but that's really not my forte. And that's really the sorts of spells that you might ask for assistance in. Um, there is one other way that you can really, really, really work with her, and it's sort of what I'd done when I first called out to her. And this is, applies to people or women in general, is that you can call, cry out to her when you are at your wit's end with pain, and she'll help. You know, I didn't know what I was doing when I'd done that, but that's exactly what people have done throughout the ages. You know, you cry out, I can't handle it anymore, I'm going to lose it. And she'll say, no, you're not, you're going to be okay, and takes away your pain. Um, and along those same lines, there's something else that really isn't a spell, but I guess you could kind of morph it into one if you so desired. It's this thing where you can ask her for something, but you got to meet her halfway. So if you're not going to say, Artemis, I need a new sedan, she'll be like, what's that? You know, like, I think that's all on you anyways. But you would um, formulate that as to help with the process of attaining the goal. Uh, it's kind of like the way she asked Zeus for her six wishes. He said, you will have whatever you want, but you have the choice in what you get. And that's kind of the way she is modeling this. So, um, ex for example, if you've got a um, presentation in front of a board of executives or whatever, and you're, you're starting to feel the anxiety and the nervousness, and you're thinking, oh no, she's, you know, or, you know, you're thinking, I'm not going to get through it. You would ask Artemis, say, can you perhaps lend me a little bit of your confidence and your strength to get through this? Because I'm getting ready to back out. And she'll say, or, you know, she'll help. But the key is, is that you have to get it in your mind that you're not going to back out and that you're going to get through it and that you will get through it. And that's kind of meeting her halfway. So you've always got to meet her halfway. And that's about it. I mean, uh, yeah.
So, until next time, remember, a goddess is great. Alright, here's something you can do if you need to have a Christmas tree, a Yule tree, you can make it an altar to your goddess, which is what I've done here. This is for Artemis. It's got deer, stars, animals, bees, arrows, gutterflies, antlers, the works, 